One of the real driving forces behind the development of the marine propeller was the introduction of steam, and this was no more, nowhere more evident than the use of paddle wheels in the early days. Hello, it's Dr. Roderick Sampson from King Propulsion. We've got another little post uh, looking into the history of the propeller. Uh, this is taken from our blog on our website. Uh, you can find us at kingpropulsion.com forward slash blog. The advent of the steam of steam, sorry, saw many changes in the design of ships. For the first time, ships were able to control where they sailed and could sail headfirst into weather they would normally have to sit out. With this great leap came propulsion systems in all shapes and flavours, which attempted to put down the power and drive the vessels. The first viable form of propulsion was undoubtedly the paddle wheel. This blog post looks into the development of such a surprisingly efficient form of propulsion. The original paddle wheel is shrouded in the mist of antiquity, but there is some evidence to suggest that the Chinese and the Egyptians had knowledge and use of a paddle wheel for ship propulsion. The Roman engineer Vitruvius described a multi-geared paddle wheel working as a ship's odometer, but first mention of paddle wheels as a means of propulsion was in the 4th or 5th century military treatise De, De Rebus Bilicius, where an ox-driven paddle wheel warship is described, and we have one shown just there on the screen. In 1472, there was evidence that the paddle wheel was used instead of oars. As early as 1543, Blasco de Garay propelled a ship by an engine consisting of a large cauldron of vessel, boiling water and a movable wheel attached to each side of the ship. This is the earliest record of a steamship and it is possible that the engine was a simple form of a marine turbine. Nearly 200 years later, in 1736, Jonathan Hulls took out a patent for a paddle wheel which he fitted into a framework at the stern of the vessel. The circular motion of the wheel was achieved by using ratchet wheels operated by ropes, one of which was connected to the piston of a condensing engine and the other to a falling weight. In 1788, the, the trials of the first practicable steamship, the Dolwinton Steamboat, of which there is actually a surviving record and accurate data, was run. The steam engine was designed by a chap called William Symington, it was a double-holed pleasure boat, so kind of like a catamaran, 25 foot in beam, and the, the paddle wheel uh, was situated between the two hulls, and it propelled at a speed of about, excuse me, five miles per hour. Uh, William Symington was again advancing the stir to the art in 1802, when he built the tugboat Charlotte Dundas. Now this is a really famous boat, and this is the one that really started things going for everybody. Uh, it was built for service on the Clyde Canal in Scotland and was the first steamship to be built for actual service as well as a source of experimentation. One of the most famous paddle steamers was actually Robert Fulton's Claremont which was built in 1807. The uh, ship was 130 foot long and had a displacement of approximately 160 tonnes and she was propelled by two 15 foot diameter paddle wheels and averaged quite a respectable 4.5 miles per hour over a distance of 110 miles and you can see a, a really cool picture of her from actual back in the day. Uh, the largest paddle steamer built by Fulton was actually a ship called the Paragon, uh, 331 tonnes displacement and she was completed in 1811. A year later in 1812 uh, the Comet was built by John Wooden Court for Henry Bell again in Scotland uh, the vessel was 40 foot long and had a displacement of 30 tonnes and she attained a speed of about 5 knots trading between Greenock and Glasgow in Scotland. Uh, they later lengthened her and fiddled with the paddle wheels and were able to increase the speed to about 6.75 knots. Over the next two decades, many patents were taken out for improvements and modifications to existing paddle wheels but by far the most important of these patents was awarded to Elijah Galloway in 1829 for what is now known as the feathering wheel. Up to this time the floats on the wheels, that's the little fins that spin around, were fixed in a radial position and entered the water at a fixed angle. Um, it should be mentioned however that Robert Hooke foresaw the, fo the, the foresaw the possibility of feathering pad paddle wheels as early as 1683. Paddle wheels continued to hold their own for many years and although the Great Eastern was built in 1858 and was built with paddles, she had uh, screw propellers fitted as well. In 1862 the uh, Cunard company launched the Scotia. This was really the the pinnacle of all the uh, the paddle wheelers. She was the largest paddle steamer for the Atlantic trade and she was again converted into a twin screw vessel. 
Although the days of large paddle steamers have passed, there are still certain cases where the paddle wheel does actually have distinct advantages. For example, the propulsion of pleasure steamers, certain tugs and shallow draft vessels all benefit from the paddle wheels. To this end, in 1956, the British Admiralty actually commissioned four diesel-electric paddle tugs to be used for the purpose of mooring um, large warships and aircraft carriers through dock entrances and confined waters, that sort of thing. Um, it was found by experience that the paddle tugs, these things were quite sizable, so 145 foot long, performed these tasks admirably. So looking really at the um, advantages of the paddle wheel, um, they allow for the smallest draft possible and they give a fantastic degree of manoeuvrability, which is something the British Admiralty wanted to capitalise on. The disadvantages and the, really the reasons that they fell out of use was the wheels uh, would come out of the water according to the loading condition and the, um, the, the sea that the vessel was travelling in. And to this end, when the vessel was being powered by these wheels, one would come out, one wouldn't come out, so the steering tended to be erratic when rolling in, in, in bad weather. So to wrap this blog post up on the fascinating, word, fascinating world of paddle wheels, um, let's bring it up to the present day. Then paddle vessels gave a simple method to convert sailing ships into steamers and saw a great boom as propulsion of ships evolved. The variability in the ship's draft with different cargoes and also the immersion of the wheels during a seaway were the key limits of the system. However, for river vessels where there isn't too much of a, um, a, a swell um, and they don't drastically change draft during the transit, it's absolutely fantastic. So for vessels like the Spirit of Peoria, just one in the picture, are still being designed and built. And this one's from 1988. Um, Spirit is not a steam vessel, so she's diesel electric, similar to the uh, trains, um, making it comparatively fast. She can achieve a speed of 15 knots and fuel efficiency of about 15 gallons per hour. So they may have slipped out of commercial use, but people can still enjoy this efficient form of propulsion even today. So thank you for watching the latest instalment of our little podcast blog post series. Um, if you want to get in touch, please email me at roderick.sampson at kingpropulsion.com. Uh, you can follow us on kingproportion.com forward slash blog and we look forward to hearing from you next time. Thank you very much.